Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Exactly six months ago, on August the 15th, the Taliban stunned the world by taking over Kabul. President Ashraf Ghani fled the country. However, his predecessor, Hamid Karzai, decided to stay on. And he joins us today from the Afghan capital. Thank you very much for being with us, Mr. Karzai. Thank you, Mr. Perryman. Very kind of you. I want to begin uh, with the humanitarian situation in the country. Two figures provided by the United Nations are especially striking. By mid-2022, 97% of Afghans will plunge into poverty, and up to 1 million children under five could die by the end of the year. Your comment on this dire humanitarian situation in your country. Well, well, I cannot uh, attest to those figures uh, or confirm those figures. Uh, yes, the fact is that the country's economy is suffering, that deprivation has increased, uh, that uh, employment opportunities have uh, considerably, considerably been reduced. Uh, but to say that uh, one million children will die and to say that 97% of the country will plunge into poverty, uh, I cannot confirm that. I hope that is not true. I wish very much, as every Afghan would, that no Afghan child would die. And it is our responsibility, even if that were to come, we should not allow it. Mr. Karzai, uh, as we can guess from those figures, uh, even if they're not confirmed, humanitarian aid is key. Financial aid is uh, key. Uh, after the uh, Taliban took over, uh, the uh, U.S. froze uh, some $7 billion in Afghan government assets in the U.S. Uh, just a couple of days ago, President Biden decided that about half of that amount would be dedicated to humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. The other half, however, would be uh, dedicated to uh, claims by the 9-11 attacks families. Uh, the Taliban caretaker government has warned that if this uh, comes, uh, this is uh, implemented, uh, there will be dire consequences for their relationship with the U.S. What is your view on this decision by the Biden administration? Uh, well, uh, not confirming those figures that were um, uh, stated by the UN, uh, I must also add that, uh, yes, Afghanistan does need humanitarian assistance. Afghanistan does need financial assistance. We welcome any assistance that comes from our friends and uh, from uh, all parts of the world. And the financial assistance, of course, is, is most welcome. On the question of uh, the Afghan reserves, uh, the Afghan assets, uh, these belong to the Afghan people. These assets do not belong to any government. Uh, a greater, greater part of these assets were collected during my time in office, during my government. Uh, but these are not the assets of, of the Karzai era or the Karzai government. And today, as the Taliban are in charge, these are also not the Taliban government's uh, assets. These are the assets of the Afghan people. And the Afghan people are as much victims as uh, the victims of the tragedy of September 11. Even more of a victims who have been suffering at the hands of terrorism for many more years more uh, and, and, and with great, great many casualties uh, than those in New York with whom we commiserate as the people of Afghanistan and whose pain we find ourselves together. So for President Biden to uh, take half of our national reserves and uh, assign it or dedicate it to uh, uh, those victims is, uh, is, is denying the victimhood of the Afghan people, uh, which is wrong uh, morally as well. Therefore, I strongly disagree with this decision. We want the entirety of the Afghan assets to be kept for Afghanistan. These belong to the future generations of Afghanistan. These are the assurance, the sureties for our for monetary uh, policies, for the stability of our currency. Uh, therefore, uh, I disagree with it. 
I would rather address the American people to tell them that the Afghans have suffered just like they have suffered on that tragic day of September 11, and that we commiserate with them, and that we must be together to find solutions and to address the grievances on both sides. Grievances mean, meaning the suffering on both sides, in which the Afghans are the writer more justified party in terms of the sympathy and support that should be given to us. So the assets must be kept intact. They belong to the Afghan people. So you and want I would ask President Biden to, I would ask Mr. President Biden to rescind his decision, to reconsider his decision and to return the assets to the Afghan people. Uh, understood. This obviously is linked to uh, the fact that uh, no foreign uh, government has recognized uh, the Taliban as uh, of now. Are you calling on the international community to recognize uh, the Taliban? We know there have been talks in Oslo, uh, again right now in uh, Doha. Do you believe such a recognition is needed or do you agree with the international community because uh, of the Taliban's track record and their attitude, uh, the recognition should not be granted immediately. Uh, the Taliban are right now the de facto government in Afghanistan. On the issue of recognition by the international community, uh, my proposal is, has been from the very beginning this, that we, the Afghan people, need to put our own house in order first. We need to be all of us, all the Afghan people, those who are um, uh, in agreement with, with, with the current dispensation in Afghanistan and those who have a difference of opinion or in, in disagreement with the current uh, uh, government of Afghanistan. They must all get together uh, uh, through the Afghan institutions and traditions and find a way forward towards a, a better future for all of us. Here, the first responsibility comes to the current government, to the Taliban government, to make sure that all Afghans from all walks of life, from all the Afghan people, are addressed, brought together, and uh, the future of the country discussed, and discussed and the decision is made through the will of the Afghan people. The expression of that will is necessary, then definitely recognition will follow. But have they responded? I know you, former Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah, have uh, called on them uh, to bring together this uh, Loya Jirga, as it's, as it's known, uh, but they have not accepted that. Indeed. Have they told you they don't want this, that this is out of the question for them? No, no, they haven't said that. Rather, they have received our letter uh, uh, very, very rightly, and uh, they have uh, been considering it uh, uh, and, and reviewing it. So let's hope an occasion comes where... where uh, the Afghans will get together and plan for the future. All right. Afghans from all walks of life. Right. Uh, one bone of contention, especially with the West, has been girls' education. Schools are supposed to reopen next month. Uh, in uh, March, the Taliban have indicated that they might be willing to allow girls to uh, attend schools. Do you think uh, this is a must? And do you believe the Taliban are going to allow this or are going to put some limits that, in effect, will prevent girls from fully attending schools? The un universities in uh, the warmer parts of the country uh, have reopened and girls have gone to, the, to their classes in those universities. Uh, the schools, uh, when they open all over the country, uh, uh, the girls must definitely return uh, back to their studies, even if the international community or the Western world does not call on, on the current government to uh, allow girls to go to school. This is the demand of the Afghan people first. This is the Afghan need first. So on the return of girls back to school, both uh, in schools and universities, and back to the workplace for our women, uh, there is no compromise. Uh, they uh, must return because that's absolutely necessary for uh, the well-being of our country. And are the Taliban going to do this according to your interactions with them? Uh, uh, um, I, guess, I guess that will happen. There is no other way. Um, I, I want to go back to uh, last August, just before Kabul fell. You and Abdullah Abdullah, the, the former chief executive, you were 
in negotiations uh, with them. Uh, you thought that you would avoid such an outcome. However, uh, President yes. Ghani uh, suddenly left uh, the country. Do you really believe that there could have been a deal with the Taliban or is this just a mm. rewriting of history? No, no, I, I, I definitely believe uh, had the situation been handled differently, had we applied a bit more speed to the peace process, both uh, uh, um, on behalf of those countries who were engaged with it and on behalf of the government of the day, that uh, a settlement could have occurred through um, a national mechanism and the country would have been saved of the much disaster and disgrace that fell upon us. Uh, I firmly believe that it could have happened. And that very day, the 15th of August, uh, the chairman of the Peace Council, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, and myself were preparing a list uh, of dignitaries to go immediately that day or the next day to Doha to engage with the Taliban leadership on an arrangement that would uh, suit the whole of the country and the, uh, the keeping of uh, the country's integrity and intactness of the state institutions. And fortunately, that didn't happen. Just as the last question, do you pl blame uh, President Ghani for this and more broadly for leaving Afghanistan the way he did? Uh, I don't put blame uh, at anyone. I simply wish that things could have happened differently, uh, that Afghanistan would have been in a lot better a place now. I mean, Karthai, I want to thank you uh, very much uh, for uh, your time and for answering uh, our questions. And thank you all for watching this interview here on France 24.